ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. One of the nicest things about appearing on television is that you do meet some charming people. Just a moment. Hey. Just a moment, please. What? Could I have the curtains, please? What's the matter? What's you know nothing about this, dear. No, I, I can tell you, I've gone white. You... <laughs> what, what's happening? I thought we were going to do the routine. The no, you've changed it. Hey. All the other rubbish you've rehearsed, it's finished. Do... Sit down. What? Well, this is a complete surprise to me. Why don't you... Sit down. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what to say, I mean... Ernest, Oliver, <laughs> Toby Wise. <laughs> is it uh, This Is Your Life? No, it's better than This Is Your Life. <laughs> Over the years, incidentally, yes. anything is better than This Is Your Life. <laughs> uh, Over the years, Anne, yes. you have given a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. <laughs> and the least said about that, the better. <laughs> But I have been asked by the Guild of Television Producers, founded in 1546, <laughs> if I will come along here tonight yes. and make this presentation to you for your outstanding contribution to the world of entertainment. <laughs> Not for that rubbish. <laughs> for that. <laughs> you were born, Anne. You were born, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> you were born with a gift that is given to very few men. Very few men, ladies and gentlemen can put their legs at the back of their neck <laughs> and whistle a selection from Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> I have seen this boy doing it, haven't I? I can do it, yes. yes. And when he's done it, he's frightened the life out of the dog, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> However, that apart, <coughs> it is as an entertainer that we all know, love and respect. I do my best. There's no need to apologize. <laughs> Few people, ladies and gentlemen, apart from myself, know that Ern did not have to enter the world of show business because you came from a very, very... You don't mind me telling them this, do you? Well, what are you going to tell them? Well, a very, very wealthy family. Oh, yes, wealthy family. You see, it broke his father's heart when Ernie told him he was going on the stage and would not be able to take over from him the general managership of the multi-story knackers yard. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We have branches all over the continent. It's well known. Yes. In Tanaka, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but what about the award? I'm coming to that. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's the finest I've ever seen. It is gorgeous. Over the years, Ern, your work has been of the very highest order. You have set a standard that few men can compete with. Well, one has a job to do. One has a job to do. <laughs> Typical of the man, and you have done your job. You have done your job in spite of personal setbacks that would have had lesser men crying enough. I'm talking. Are you enjoying that? <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm talking about your accident. Oh, it, it was nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> it was nothing. It could have proved fatal. <laughs> That magic roundabout was going full belt when you did Did Why are you so modest? Did you have to bring that up? What about the award? I'm coming to that. <laughs> Nobody knows, Ern, you're worth better than me. Thank you. I mean, many times we've been working together. Other television and something has gone wrong. And you have saved the day. Quick as a flash, without thinking, you've collapsed. <laughs> I'd rather not talk about it. I don't blame you. <laughs> what about the award? I'm coming to it, son. At the age of 18, you proved yourself in the field, and she promised never to tell her mother. <laughs> and that is what you're getting the award for. The moment we've all been waiting for. I... I feel a lump. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh. I feel a lump in my throat right now. Gosh. <laughs> Ernest? Birkinshaw? Paddy Wise, <laughs> on behalf of just about every television viewer in the country, it gives me the very greatest personal pleasure to be able to present you with this magnificent luncheon voucher. <laughs> Luncheon voucher. 
Chat? Don't eat it now. <laughs> Save it till you get home and keep a piece for me. But, but luncheon voucher? Yeah. What about the cup? I want that. You want it? Yeah. What for? Telling lies. <laughs> One night whilst playing with the band A girl came up, she said, you're grand I replied in words low down Well, this is how the music goes round I said, blow through here yeah, yeah. Then the music goes round and round Oh, and it comes out here it comes out here I press the first valve down The music goes round and round the middle bow down music goes round and round below 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 in the oh listen to the sound come out i press the third bow down the music goes round and round oh and it comes out here what's gonna come out there said you're fine i answered miss well the place is mine then she said well what's that thing for i thought i'd better show her once more oh i said i broke through here and the music goes round and round oh and it comes out here out of here son i press the first valve down the music goes round and round oh and it comes out here with a laugh, that's me. I do them all, you know. I do them all. It's quarter to ten in the morning. Do you have to do the joke? Move up. <laughs> Will you stop fooling around? You're a right misery, you. First thing in the mornings, do you know that? A real misery. Well, no wonder. Why? I didn't get a wink of sleep through you last night. Didn't you? No. Oh. Look, do me a favor. What? Don't have Windsor Super game before you go to bed. <laughs> Why not? You were out of bed last night four times whistling the national anthem. <laughs> you were lucky I didn't have cockaligi then. <laughs> Double meanings. What do you mean, double meanings? What do you mean? Well, you're doing it all the time. Look, you've got favourites you have. Favourites that you're always doing. Are you getting any? Not a lot. <laughs> I fancy a bit. It's a bit well, early. <laughs> the man in the paper was right, you know. You're making us into second-rate comics. He knows nothing. We are second-rate comics. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be on Panorama. <laughs> That's the... The paper boy. I thought somebody was being strangled then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I've got it. Have a little bit of fun. Oh, you're not going to play that game with him. He are loves you? it. We've never seen each other like ships are crossing the night. You watch it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He caught 
you that time, ah, I'm telling shut you. Shut up. Yeah. Start the day with a laugh, he says. Move up. <laughs> You're miserable, you. You've been miserable all week. Ever since you've been in bed with Flo. <laughs> Flo. That's your fault. <laughs> Lad. Don't keep doing that! What's the time? Ten o'clock. Oh, just in time for old Jimmy Young. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Hope he's not gonna sing. Uh, puts me up my cornflakes. <laughs> Morning all, and on the JY show, it's definitely a bit T-A-T-T, -T -T, taters around the turntables, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Each call is going to leap wildly out to a gentleman who has reached the grand old age of 98. And it's a very good morning and many happy returns to Mr. Ernest Wise. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wise is 98 today, writes his nephew, 21-year-old Mr. Eric Morecambe. <laughs> tells us that despite his extreme old age, Mr. Wise is still a great favourite of the Darby and Joan Club, so where he often entertains all the, the other old age pensioners with melodies old and new oh, the on the spoon. On the spoon! <laughs> and especially for you, Mr. Wise, your favourite record requested by young Eric, In My Sweet Little Alice Blue Gown. <laughs> Switch that thing off! Oh, no, it's a lovely record. That's not my... I don't like that record at all. It's a lovely record, yeah. that. You were the one who sent that request in once. Sure, Lord. Well, a lovely record. It's uh, got that label on the front with a dog looking down the megaphone saying, hey, have you seen what I've done? <laughs> oh, my friends were listening to that. You've made me the laughing stock. you have. This is absolutely... You never... You take a delight, don't you, in insulting me, don't you? Yes, I do, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> You'll never grow up, will you? Shouldn't think so. Yeah. You've got the mentality of a child of eight. Seven, I would have said. <laughs> That's a good laugh. Stop being so childish! Hey, my sweet little Alice Blue. It was either that one or I enjoy being a girl. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Ernest. No, I really do admire it. You stand for the three cards. Yes, I do. I do. If you ever left me, I don't know what I'd do for laughs. I really don't. Right. Now is your chance to find out. You're a fine actor, this boy. A fine actor. Where are you going now? Oh, you're not going to do the ventriloquist routine, are you? We all know you were the first with the suitcase. Hello! 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 <laughs> I'm leaving! Ah, now was that you or did it come from the case? <laughs> Are you leaving? Yes. Are you taking this with you? you... <laughs> Put that back! We've had a good few melodies on that. <laughs> oh, you don't mean it. Yes, I do mean it. Oh, I'm getting out do of here. Favor. I'm going to go and stay with my Auntie Ethel. Uh, uh, look. Honestly, are you serious? I have never been more serious in all my life. Oh. <laughs> go on, go on. Oh, I'm going. Oh, I'm going to stay with my Auntie Ethel, and that's all there is to it. You're going to stay with who? Um, Auntie Ethel. Get in out of there. Uh, I've had enough of you. You've gone too no, far. No, do me a favor. What? Please don't go. I'll put three pairs of socks in point. Yes. <laughs> don't go. No, look, look. I'm I asking that, you not to. Go. I heard that request on the radio. I'm begging you not to go. Entertains the old expenses at the Derby and Jaunty. <laughs> on the spoons. Oh, we haven't put those in. Put them in your pocket. <laughs> now, whatever you do, I'm do me a favor. Yeah. Promise me one thing. What? You won't leave. Look, don't try and stop me. No, don't. No. <laughs> it's no good you trying to talk me out of it. No. Please, and don't go. No, I'm not trying to stop. Honestly, don't. Honestly, don't go. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll <laughs> be back again. Yes. Thought so. <laughs> well, if he's taking Teddy, he means it. That to him is like having custody of the children. And I'm not coming back, you understand, Eric Morkham? We don't want you back, Ernie, uh, uh, <laughs> Wise! Wise! Was it? Oh, I never knew that. <laughs> Where can he go? He can't go to his Auntie Ethel's. She's never in. <laughs> He's back already. He must have run there. Anne! Come... Hello, Eric. Oh, hello, Anne. How are you? Come in. You don't seem very pleased to see me. No, it's not that. Wrong? No. Where's Ernie? Who? Ernie! He's gone. Gone? Gone where? No idea. Have you had a tiff? No, I haven't eaten a thing since breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened was, 
I did a job on Ernie's technique the wrong way. You know, he's gone. He's carpet. Finished. Oh. Oh, Eric, you'll miss him. Eh? All his personal things lying around here to remind you of him. Do me a favour. <laughs> I bought him that for Christmas. He didn't like it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You can see him now with his little legs dangling over the side there when he took the hat. Eric, can I do something for you in the kitchen? Pardon? <laughs> there you go again with those double meanings. We're all at it. Do you want anything to eat? No, no, no. No, only we'll be back in ten minutes anyway. Oh. We'll have a meal then. Okay. We'll have a little party. He's bound to be back in ten minutes. Why? Well, the lollipop man doesn't come on duty till twelve o'clock. <laughs> and he can't cross the road without him, so he'll be back. <laughs> ten minutes. Bye. <laughs> it's the Jimmy Young Show. Mr. Eric Morecambe still live here? Yes, Mr. Morecambe does live here. It's Anne, isn't it? How did you know? Good gracious me, it's Ernie, um, Ernie, um... Wise. Oh, was it? Yes. Yeah. Come, <laughs> Come in. Come in. There. Now, you just sit down. Let me take that for you, my oh, dear. thank you very much. There. Do you mind if I sit down? It's me back, you see. Yes, you do that. <laughs> now, you must tell me all... All about it. Uh, move up. Yes. <laughs> now, tell me, where have you been all this time? She wasn't in. <laughs> Who wasn't? Me, Auntie Ethel. Then what have you been doing these last 20 years? Funny, really. Funny? You? <laughs> <laughs> Been, uh, been entertaining the old age pensioners at the Derby and John Club on the spoons. <laughs> Would you like a quick chorus of anchors away? Um, so uh, good. Perhaps a bit later. Is uh, is he in? Uh, you mean Eric? Yeah. Yes, yes. I suppose he's changed quite a lot, eh? We all have. Yes. Twenty years is a long time. <laughs> Forty years is twice as long. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll go and tell him you're here. Um, he has a, a nap in the afternoon, uh, you know, has a rest every uh, afternoon. I'll go and... Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Don't tell him it's me. I want to see whether he recognises me. I don't suppose I'll recognise him after all this time. Twenty years is a long time. Forty years is twice as long. <laughs> <laughs> My dear, there's somebody here to see you. Now, mind how you get out of bed. Go carefully. He'll be here in a few minutes. <laughs> hey! <laughs> how are you? Nice to see you. Hey, my sweet little Ali. Oh, you're still me. insulting me, you oh, are. Shut up, <laughs> You are here saving yourself kissing an old lady. It's makeup, you mug. What's the matter with you? What do you mean? Yeah! <laughs> Looking for fun and feeling groovy Hello, lamppost, what you knowin'? I've come to watch your flowers growin' Ain't you got no rhymes for me? Doodly -do -do -do, feeling groovy Feeling groovy <laughs> To do, no promises to keep. I'm dappled and drowsy and ready to sleep. Every morning can drop all its petals on me. Life, I love you, all is groovy. <laughs> Hello, lamppost, what you know? I've come to watch your flowers growing. 
Ain't you got no rhymes for me? to kid. I'm dappled and drowsy and ready to sleep. Every morning can drop all its petals on me. Life, I love you. All is groovy. All is groovy. another exciting episode in our late night horror serial. Don't miss next week's gripping installment of Horror Strikes Again. And now it's time for the epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> September when life was slow and oh so mellow try to remember the kind of September when grass was green and corn so yellow try to remember the kind of September when you were young and the callow fellow, try to remember, and if you remember, and follow, follow. Try. Except the willow Try to remember The kind of September When dreams were kept Beside the pillow Try to remember The kind of September When love was an ember About to bellow Try to remember and if you remember and follow, follow. In December, it's nice to.
to remember Although you know the snow will follow Deep in December it's nice to remember Without a hurt the heart is hollow Deep in December it's nice to remember the fire of September that made you mellow Deep in December it's nice to remember and follow gentlemen, I think I can safely say that tonight's play is the finest and greatest that I've ever written. <laughs> I feel sure that it will be recognized as a classic of our time. And I wrote it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The leading part calls for an actor of outstanding ability, but we couldn't get one. <laughs> so we asked Mr. Ian Carmichael to come along and he jumped at it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ian Carmichael! Thank you. Mr. Carmichael, first of all, let me say thank you very much for agreeing to appear in my masterpiece. Ernie, it's a great, great pleasure. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but I've seen the other fellow do that and I've always wanted to have a go. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so I do that. Did you? Oh, yeah. Not quite right. No? You see, you went like this, didn't you? I did indeed. Well, yeah. it's not. Oh. No, it's more. Chase. <laughs> you got to hit him hard yes. to get the sound. It's the sound that matters. Yes, Let's have another go. Will he mind? He's in a stupor, he knows I nothing. Know. <laughs> How about that? Nine out of ten for uh -huh. effort. Oh. But more of a get off. Get off! Yes, <laughs> right. Yes, right. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> You did right there, Ryan. I should say I did. Good right. Lord, yes. Your little cheeks were going red there. <laughs> he didn't half bend me across the jowls. The jowls? That's a, yeah. That's a place he belted you. You did. I don't know how the man had the nerve to come up to you and go like that. Yeah, I know. Really good. <laughs> he's an actor, isn't he? Yes. You can always tell he's a bum. Come on, <laughs> he's, a bum. he's our star guest, you know. Is he? He's still a bum. Oh, Mr. Carmichael, will you yeah. please come back? I'm can terribly I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't the jowls. mean to hurt you. Oh, just watch it, that's all. Right. Right. Let's not forget this young boy here. He's, he's, he's half a star. I'm half a star. Yes. This Come is Mr. Carmichael, Mr. Carmichael, this is Mr. Morecambe. I'd like to introduce you. I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Morecambe. <laughs> Mr. Carmichael has given me the greatest pleasure to shake the hand that has written so many hit songs. Yes. <laughs> um, I beg your pardon? Stardust? <laughs> Old Buttermilk Sky? And dozens more, which was a particular favourite of ours. Yes. <laughs> We got to start it, it was on our way to failure, yes. didn't it? Yes, it did. Yes. You remember that one in yes. 1908? Yes. Dozens <laughs> more. What we need in the audience is dozens more. <laughs> yes. I say, but uh, aren't you a little confused? Another one of your classics. <laughs> well, we closed the act with that, didn't we? Yes, we did. And a few theatres to boot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you a little confused, Mrs. Worthington? We did all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very pleased to know you. Yes. Because I've got all your records. Oh, really? My LP's out, you know. You can get two years for that, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Have you met Hogan? Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, do. Come along over here. <laughs> oh, but please don't take any notice. When he gets carried away, you know, he always acts like this when we have when we, when we have a guest star on the show like well, you. And he, how, how, how do you mean? Well, he gets jealous, you see. Really? Oh, terribly jealous. Really? Oh, oh, yes. Yes. He's like this. That. Yes, he's I like this. He's taking all my lights. Really? He's like this every week. Is he? Oh, yeah. Well, why does he do it? Ah, well. Pardon? How does he do it? <laughs> yes. Ah, well, you see, it's jealousy. Is he? Yes. He doesn't like anybody else. You've got a minute, have you? Yes, I have. Yes, indeed, yes. He doesn't like anybody else getting the limelight, I would say. That's not what it is, getting the limelight. I would say. That's so. And he never sticks to the script. Really? No. It's all rubbish what he said. He never sticks to the script. Oh, he does. But well, there's one thing drives me mad. No, listen, he's very sensible. He drives me mad. Mm. Tell him, tell him, tell him. He, 
You, will you get off and get changed for the part? Oh, I'll get off. Sorry, I'll get off. You did well again there, uh, Your little cheeks them. were going red with temper. I know. Oh, that man could come up to you and go like that. You... I'll never know. <laughs> Wait a minute. What happened to it, Mr. Carmichael? Will you please come back? How's it going again? Sorry, you oh. tell me to go off a moment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> he meant me, obviously. Yes, get off, you. Yes, You're working well, Sorry about that, Mr. That's Carmichael, right. just ignore right. it. Yeah. Now, I'd like to speak to you about the part that I've written for you. I don't have to for you. No! <laughs> Do you care? <laughs> Want a coffee? Yeah, that's that. Want some tea, eh? Tea, eh? It's gone for certain. Hoagie. Hoagie. <laughs> Hoagie? Yes. Now, I know that you are famous on the stage and in films as a light comedian. Yes, I'm five stone six. <laughs> five stone six. <laughs> I heard it. Yes. I was lying down there. I heard it. Yes, did I? Yes. Now, you put that jock to music, you have another hit. Another hit? That's most kind. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Look, Hoagie, I'm telling you, don't take any notice of him. He always does all these jokes mm. because he knows that you do comedy. Yeah, well, usually I do, Ernie, but, um, well, frankly, I'd really like to get right away from comedy. Oh, well, you've come to the right show. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, um, in fact, I'd really get, like to get my teeth into a, uh, you know, a really meaty, dramatic role and do some serious acting for a change. Well, I've got just the part for you. Uh -huh. What could be more dramatic and more serious than the part of Dr. Frankenstein, Baron Frankenstein, in Frankenstein's monster? Yeah, I know, and that is exactly why I chose the play in the first place. It's really? What do you want? I've been off too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, look, I'm really, I'm really going to give the character of Baron Frankenstein everything I've got. Oh, I know you. Uh, but there won't be any more messing about than the other fellow will lurk. Well, not if I can help. No, it. right. Well, in that case, I'd... Uh, well, I better go and get ready. Yes, just do that. Yes, yes, ready. yes uh, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Still not quite right. No, it? it's the timing. Oh. It's the timing. Is oh, right. Yes. It's the timing. It's, it's more of the. Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, have another go. Right. There, there we are. Now. He's oh, got it. He's got it. He's a bum, but he's got it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure I'd like to present to you, translated from the Greek of the same name. <laughs> Mr. Ian Carmichael playing the part of Baron Frankenstein in my most dramatic play ever, Frankenstein's Monster. <laughs> What's all this? Could I have a word with you, please? <laughs> yes. yes of course. The white. <laughs> the telegram. You get them all in, aren't you? What are you breath? You haven't got nerve to share my life. All right, you brought the telegram. <laughs> Listen. What? The white mice. The white mice. Six white mice. They haven't come. <laughs> six white mice? The six white mice that you ordered haven't come. Six, six white mice. <laughs> six white mice. Six white mice. Six white So the fairy godmother. Fairy godmother? <laughs> she could change into the horses that pull the coat back. Cinderella! Well, of course, you fool! <laughs> we only do Cinderella at Christmas. You speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing Baron Frankenstein, Frankenstein's monster. We're not doing Cinderella. But I've only learned Cinderella. <laughs> I've learned Cinderella. You, only, you mean you only know the words of Cinderella? What, what are we going to do? I have no idea. Well, you just have to do the best you can. But will it be enough? Well, <laughs> it's good when you want it. You were going to play the part of Igor the Dwarf, assistant to Baron Frankenstein. That's the part I had for you. Igor the Dwarf, I e play that. You play that part. Well, I'll go back here and belittle myself. <laughs> <laughs> Could you just tremble up? I usually do. Yes. <laughs> Have you got a key? <laughs> <laughs> just Ladies and gentlemen, this is my finest hour, Frankenstein's Monster. <laughs> At last, at last, after a lifetime's work, I am within reach of man's greatest achievement. To think that I, Baron Frankenstein, should be the one to bring about the greatest scientific miracle since the dawn of time. Yet sometimes, 
I wonder why I spend the lonely nights <laughs> dreaming of a song. <laughs> the melody haunts my. What am I doing? Now? I have created a thing, and soon I will give it life. Now, where is my faithful assistant, Igor? Igor! <laughs> Hell, kitty! <laughs> Every time you see me leave the stage, you all shout goodbye, you big daft dwarf. <laughs> Ego, my misshapen little friend. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not nice. I'm not really the shape. I have a tortoise hibernating up my shirt. <laughs> Ego! Ego, you know what night it is tonight. Cheeky. <laughs> However, you shall go to the ball, Cinderella. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Don't worry. I've got the six white mice, they've just arrived. Six white mice, yes. Let me pocket. If you see something move down there, don't panic. <laughs> and the cushion, up we jump at. We'll be all right. What is your command? Igor, tonight I'm about to fill one of my lifelong ambitions. Yes, dirty devil. Igor, <laughs> take a look out of the window and tell me what you see. Three stagehands playing rummy. <laughs> Master! Master! The sky's getting dark and overcast. <laughs> Igor, if my calculations are correct, soon a most fearsome storm will break over the castle. So? I have got a hunch. So have I, you <laughs> <laughs> I will oh. utilize the energy from the storm to give life to my creation. Come, Igor, I want you to help me to bring him into the laboratory. Certainly. Get, oh. <laughs> Please, right. Come and give me a hand, Igor. Certainly. There he is. Bring him out. Control him. That's the idea. Uh, perfect. Turn. <laughs> Under there. Turn. <laughs> now, Igor, I want you to see the result of my years of toil. <laughs> Fantastic! Absolutely marvellous. So what's at this end? Good Lord! <laughs> I'm going to cycle home now. <laughs> How tall is your monster? Six feet. Well, take two feet off him. Bubble. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nick Dutton. Come along now, Igor. Tell me, what do you think of him? Oh. Marvellous. Those two weeks in Mallorca did him the world of good. <laughs> you will notice there are still one or two parts left to be fitted onto him. That is true, that is true. <laughs> What's this loose thing here? Get, let go of my bolt! Oh, steady now, uh. <laughs> Sorry about that, son. Sorry. Let get go. Edor, did you bring me the other parts for his ah, um, body? Yes, I did. did. A lot of trouble at the court getting them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the woman at the baking counter gave me a funny look, you see. <laughs> well, I said half a dozen eggs, two left elbows and a kneecap. <laughs> I'll go and get them for you. No, 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 no. No, Tamara, the gypsy girl, will bring them in. But surely she's still breaking cars on the lay-by. <laughs> Tamara! Hey! <laughs> ah, Tamara. Tonight, if it's lucky. <laughs> I have two little queries. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I'd say that, really. What is under that sheet? I have created a being, Tamara. But this time, I think I've gone too far. It is something so evil, so monstrous, so vile. Hey, turn. <laughs> See him down there, asleep, reading the script. Yes. <laughs> Master, what is in? That box. These are the parts for the monster. Now. Oh. Uh, oh dear. Yes, indeed. Could I have a word with you? Uh, yes, surely. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yes, you're quite. You are. Yes, yes there should be two of those. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, that is if, you, is if you're going to do it properly. Yes. No, otherwise, you're going to limp. <laughs> They're not making them like that anymore, are they? Oh, no. <laughs> well, you can't get the wood or the silver paint. No, you can't. Well, look, how do they see? The 
storm is upon us, Igor. Quick, we have not a moment to lose. Right. Oh, hello, oh, yes. Keep yes. going, right. Give me that floor. Two more. Soon, soon, Igor, the whole world will know the name of Baron Frankenstein. Who? Frankenstein. Oh. Is he done yet? No, just a few seconds more. I want another 5,000 volts up the leg of his trousers. <laughs> well, that'll bring the colour back to his cheeks, I must say. Here now. There now. Igor, my misshapen little friend. Forgotten that, yes. Ah, <laughs> Igor, this is a moment that I have waited for all my life. I'm all of a tiller. <laughs> That's all my hand. I'm a stranger <laughs> in paradise. <laughs> oh, lost in a <laughs> he wrote it. This is the moment of truth. Right. If we go. Oh, oh all right. Yes. You pick that dwarf. Now watch. <laughs> watch, Igor. Let us see if my experiment has worked. Will my monster come to life? <laughs> you said that without moving your lips. <laughs> <laughs> he moans, must. <laughs> After 5,000 volts up the leg of his trousers, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Igor! Look at him! He lives! <laughs> Igor, I've done it! <laughs> All right, you can. Igor, I have proved my genius to the world. Igor! He's absolutely perfect. Yes, Master, he is. <laughs> Don't you think he's a little small for a monster? Yeah, well, he's not really a monster at all, is he? he? Half a monster. Yeah, more of a monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. oh, no, that Father Christmas, you fool. <laughs> a monster! <laughs> Igor, I wonder if there is anything that we have forgotten. Alas, is there anything that we have forgotten? Yes. What? You left. My heart <laughs> in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, you did that for now. You've done a miraculous job, there, sir. And when the <laughs> here, you can't even see the join. <laughs> join, huh? join, can't see join. Kill her! Are you going to do something? Oh, what you shall we do without you? you? Gee, leave it to me. Come on! For me, that you know that. Right. What? Oh. Right. Oh, no. Kiss. No. Kiss. No. He got to do something. Stop him. Kiss. Stop him before he does something terrible. Oh, it's too late. Why? He's doing something. Stop that. <laughs> Scratching his ear with his foot. <laughs> <laughs> kill. I told you to keep that door shut. Kill the kill. Ha! No, get back. Get back. Is it the villagers? No. It's the audience. If they're nasty, I knew they would. <laughs> Stop this man from going berserk. You'll have to drive a stake through his heart. I haven't got a stake. Will a lamb chop do? <laughs> yes. Just around the corner, maybe sunshine for you. Just around the corner, skies above may be blue. Keep a little smile on, that's the right thing to do. In a little while, your troubles, they will disappear like just around the corner, there's a bluebird on high. Waiting for a rainbow in the sky. Why? Even though it's dark and cloudy, sun. They peep through and say, how did you? 